Good day, everyone. Welcome to the introduction to e-commerce course webinar. And I'm your course coordinator, RM Nisperos. For uh, this video, we'll be discussing a quick overview of the course, some uh, observations and summary of the survey that you've made at the start of the course. So I summarize some parts and uh, I'll make quick comments on them. Also, um, I have a, a, a general comment on assignment number one, uh, answers that I received from uh, this from you. So I'll be stating some general observations uh, that can improve your submissions, but I will comment on uh, each and every one, uh, hopefully this weekend, all right? Okay, so uh, I'll be posting this video later, uh, maybe this weekend for those who have not uh, attended this live session. So this is, again, for those who are in this uh, Zoom meeting, our webinars uh, will be conducted every other week, uh, but this, uh, the next webinar will be conducted next week since the next next week is my birthday week. So uh, I'll pushing back the, the next webinar for next week. All right. So uh, I'll be quick on this uh, video, hopefully an hour. And uh, if you have questions, uh, feel free to butt in anytime, all right? So for the course, quick overview of the course. The Introduction to E-Commerce course is pretty easy to accomplish, to complete. You just need to submit four assignments and an e-commerce project at the end. I, I'm always, I'm usually lenient on the first or, or on the assignments, the four assignments, since these are learning opportunities for students to, to learn how to plan quickly using the business model. So we will be using the business model uh, as against the business plan. So business plan is a set of actions to, to achieve an objective or a goal. Um, we're using business model, which is the system or the inter interplay of different business factors to generate sustainable value or sustainable profit. So we'll be using that since majority of students are in the planning stages. Now, this would be beneficial, especially for those starting up, for those who are into an actual operating registered business, this is an opportunity for you to explore growth opportunities, uh, the business model approach, all right? So the, the usual profile of the introduction to e-commerce students are students who just want to learn and maybe, maybe operate a business at the end or in the future, at the end of the course or in the future, Usually, I recommend the e-commerce projects for them uh, are, uh, should be based on uh, social media. Everything that is free, uh, that freely available resources that you can use to open up a mock-up e-commerce project. So maybe a Facebook page, Instagram store, something like that. So you won't be shelling out extra budget for uh, to, com to complete the e-commerce project. The other students of the course are uh, really entrepreneurs who are either starting to have their resources with them. They are eager to start. Others who have an actual operating business. I, I usually suggest to this segment of students to shell out a little bit for the, the purchase of domain names and maybe a, a server or a hosting. So 
hosting plan so that they can start a branded owned website for them, which is usually the case for students who have an actual operating business. So we will discuss that later in the course. So that's a quick overview. So we just need to submit four assignments. Assignments are integrated with the e-commerce project. And then you submit the e-commerce project at the end. That's the time I usually um, evaluate on a much greater detail as compared to the first or the first assignments or the assignments, so four assignments. All right, so that's a quick overview of the course. You just need to submit everything and uh, hopefully you'll, you'll receive a course uh, certificate with high distinction. All right, now I've read the survey or the questionnaire I posted on the my portal or online classroom. So uh, in summary, we have four major, five major points that you want to learn, that you want to know more about so that it can help you in whatever it may serve for your actual business or for your plans, uh, future plans for business. So first planning, uh, we'll cover that in the business model. Um, business model sessions. We'll have one um, discussion, a video, and a Zoom meeting like this for specifically for that. Um, at, after the, the quick overview, we'll be having a quick snapshot of, of that business model approach, right? Uh, for this video. Marketing is uh, heavily mentioned across all of the answers of students, how to better reach their market, how to expand their brand, and how to get more sales. So basically, we'll, have a, we'll be having one session on that, one Zoom meeting for marketing. Um, Maybe I'll cover also some of the branding that can help you decide what to pursue in terms of the creatives. Creatives are the content that you'll be using for your marketing plans or marketing approaches. And then we have product selection and platforms. Product selection, uh, I read around two answers on that, how they can select better products for their business, uh, we'll be having, we'll indirectly, indirectly mention this, but this is related to how will you target your market better so that you would know their needs. And by knowing their needs, you'll know what products to select. So we will cover that in the future discussions. And lastly, platforms. Um, if the students would want to have one webinar that would discuss how we can start or how can we develop a platform, a website on your own. Uh, we can do that prior uh, delivery of the course. Uh, last sem, we had one, one session where, where in, I made an actual website from scratch uh, without the coding of an actual uh, knowledge of programming. So there are tools that you can just drag and drop, much like when you're creating your PowerPoint presentations. You can, you know, you can create websites like that. Um, I primarily use WordPress for that uh, because it's flexible, easy to maintain, easy to edit, and also the digital marketing benefits of using that platform it's very easy to do search engine optimization as compared to the the other platforms so if you want to cover that uh please comment reply on the forum i've created on topics you want to be discussed on the future future discussions like this i think i left two meetings for those uh, 
topics if you if you want to have last semester it's more on the platforms and digital marketing uh, that's the request of the students because majority of the students last semester last year are uh, half of the class are operating an actual business so it's more on how to create the brand and how to execute that in a marketing outreach approach through advertising and then the viral approach that you can uh, you can do alongside the, the paid marketing approaches so we can have that uh, just just reply on the comment or the, the post i started on our course portal all right okay now uh on the assignment number one general comments for the for for all of the submission so i just want to highlight this five five uh observations that i've made so first uh i'm quite happy that there is no mention of the paradox between quality quality and affordability uh, past courses or past semesters this is usually the case where students put on their business ideas they would offer high quality at the the low at the affordable cost something like that or low cost at a high quality uh product something like that so uh in business especially in starting a business in a start a phase of a business quality is inversely proportional to affordability or cost so you need to select one when you are starting unless you are you have uh, vast experience vast resources and unlimited budget you can target both but uh most of the time, 99% of the time, targeting both is usually for matured businesses who have the brand established. But for a startup business, starting one, you just need to choose and pursue that in order to be uh, good in terms of your strategy, in terms of the competition. Because quality involves cost. And when you offer high quality, it involves higher cost than usual. And when you offer a low-cost strategy approach on your, for your business, it involves homogeneous qualities, standard processes, and uh, quality is usually not that high in terms of satisfying all the customer requirements. So there, is, there are two approaches in starting a business. It's either you push for quality and that includes higher prices because you have higher costs than usual or you push for lower cost and omit the features that you need so that you can offer at a lower price as compared to competition. So uh, there's no mention of this issue on the assignment. So I'm quite happy with that. Second observation is the target market. I've mentioned uh, on the, uh, I think on the question, the guide question on the target market, you need to be specific. Specific in terms of the geographic uh, scope initially, uh, and then the demographics, the age range maybe, the interest, the behavior, you need it's not enough just to just to mention like mothers. Uh, it's very difficult. There are many subsegments of that uh, market. So you need to be, you need to have hypotheses on who uh, on that target market would better fit the product you're trying to or product or service you're trying to to offer. I know at the start of a business, you really don't have that, that specific, but it's better to guess at the start because you would test that when you do market research. So the better or, or the more 
specific your target market, the more uh, opportunity you can have in terms of getting more feedback, getting more qualities that you can use for your marketing plans. All right. So as we go along the course, target market should be more narrower so that you can have one profile that you can use to match to your marketing plans, right? Third, I saw numerous multi-sided business models. Those multi-sided business models, the users are not the customers. Um, the perfect example of a multi-sided business model is Facebook. Facebook, the, the, the social media app. The users of Facebook are us, people, and we use that for free. No cost for us. It's just the cost for us is like the data that we put on the platform. The customer is the business who advertise. So... When you start multi-sided business model, it's very difficult to build the consumer and the user in parallel. So you need to focus on one. Uh, I saw a business idea. Uh, I've read the business idea about artists and then um, businesses who would employ them. So depends on your capacity, your resources, you need to build one segment first before you focus on the other. So it's very difficult to, to, to prioritize both. You need to have a priority in terms of a multi-sided business model. Fourth, uh, this is related to the target market uh, observation that I made a while ago. Target market, you need to be specific. When you are specific in your target market, you would have Common, common need, common wants, common um, qualities that you can use for your marketing approach. In a one-stop shop, it's very difficult for a new business, a startup business to offer everything. When you're good at targeting your market, you would know the most painful need that they have. And usually, you build that need using the products and services that you offer. One-stop shop usually are operated or started by government institutions or other foundations because they have vast resources to start with. For new businesses, you need to be focused on where to put your budget so that you would have the highest engagement uh, from your customers. So I suggest if you're offering a one-stop shop, maybe prioritize the best product that you have and uh, others would be just secondary. Uh, in my experience, it's better to have a focused set of products initially and when you are successful in marketing that, then you build the other parts of your so-called one-stop shop. Um, it's very difficult to execute one-stop shop immediately. Um, and lastly, uh, risk management. This is the often neglected part in starting a business. Not just in e-commerce, but in any business. When we go into business, we enter into a world full of uncertainty. Actually, if you don't have a correct, sustainable business model and you just created a business plan, day one in executing that business plan, it would always fail because you're not ready for the uncertainties of the market. Usually, markets behave differently uh, the way we planned it. I endure this many times. Uh, I started many businesses before uh, that failed because I failed to manage the risks. And one major risk that we should be mindful about is market risk. We assume that our target market really needs our product or really wants our product. 
But in reality, it's not that too painful that they would shell out money just to buy your products because they are um, satisfied with the current solution, current product, current services they are using. So that's the biggest risk. That's the major contributor of business failure is risk management or market risk. Market risk is selling something that no one wants. Uh, this happened to me when I first started the business. I, I, it's a food business. So we planned carefully for two months, the recipes and all. And then when we offer that to our target market, it's simple. They don't want it. So in managing market risk, you need to do market research. And that's, I think, the activity in assignment number three. It's simple. You need to ask your customers, do you want this? Do you need this? Would you pay for this? So with that, you would have a clue, a feedback to know whether uh, you, can, you will eliminate market risk. There are other risks, uh, especially sa, uh, on the technology side, uh, for those businesses who are into more uh, technology, uh, technology-based platforms like the multi-sided ones. Uh, this is called product risk. Can you do the product, um, the product, the application that you, in, you plan for? And that includes the budgets that you need. Is it feasible on your part? But that's a product risk. There's also financial risk. Uh, can you endure the first three to six months uh, that you usually don't sell anything? You just build the market. Can you survive that? So there are many risks. But in my opinion, market risk, is the number one business killer and you need to be uh, protected using market research. So we'll be discussing that and you'll be doing something, uh, I think on assignment number three, which is customer development, All right? Now, before I do the actual uh, lecture for this, uh, this video, I would, um, in part, the principles that I usually uh, follow when starting a business, the, the main principle that I usually teach uh, to my students, uh, ito lang, maalala nyo lang, masaya na ako. Because other technical stuff, you would forget that uh, uh, when, you, when, we, when you don't uh, apply it in... Uh, actual business but this principle of starting big you think big you start small but you act fast this enables us to learn more and by learning more we can have a great picture of our target market and by doing so we can offer the best product and services uh, we can by starting small the failure that we get, the cost of failure is lower than the learnings that we get so that we can iterate or improve our second version, third version, fourth version of our product. Acting fast is not a, a luxury anymore because of the competition, the technology, the numerous online business uh, sprouting everywhere, acting fast is a necessity and acting fast for me is like I have this hypothesis so may hula ako kunyari yung business ko itong bagong product bebenta to so by acting fast I would do a two week sprint a uh, one month at the most and I try to have a target let's say 100 sales for that new product if I can reach that in a month, in a week, and using maybe a paid marketing approach, or Facebook ad lang ako kanyare. If I achieve the the one hundred target within two weeks, I learned that this 
new product would work. And I would ask the customer, a few of the customers who bought, what uh, is the critical success factor that they considered when they decided to buy a product. So in that sense, you would learn more about your customer so that you can use that to market to a wider scale. So that's uh, how I do things. I think big, always, but I start small. That's why you need to be more focused in your target market because the, the narrower your target market, the, the, the more common uh, their characteristics, their behavior. And by having a common reaction feedback, you can have greater features for your products and services. Now, uh, in relation to thinking big, starting small and acting fast, our smart failures. In business, failure is not the opposite of success. Failure are stepping stones for success. And uh, you don't want to fail big time wherein you put everything on the business plan and then when you execute, uh, you would learn that it won't work. So if you put everything in that plan, all of your budget, and it won't work, you won't have budgets to use for the next few months. Doing smart failures or, or embracing failure as a way to learn uh, in a smart way is creating sprints using the scientific approach. Um, perfect example. Um, when I first started a business, uh, we, we, a friend of mine, we started a small t-shirt business. So we print designs. So let's say uh, I have a budget uh, that is for 100 shirts only. Now, before, we printed everything, 100 items on one uh, design, and then sell. Pray that, it, that the 100 would be bought by our customers. And... Uh, when that didn't happen, the 100 shirt budget would be lost. It would be just a sunk cost for me. Uh, so that's the old, old school way. You plan, you, you, you put everything, and then pray that uh, you would succeed. But by practicing smart failures, I can do, I can reinvent the wheel by, say, the design that I made, we would create uh, a picture showing a prototype of the shirt with the design. And then I would market that in a pre-selling way. So 100. I would use Facebook ad, for example, or Google ads. When they click, they can order. But it's just for uh, pre-order. Hindi pa ako nag-print actually ng shirt. It's just a prototype to test whether my hypothesis of selling 100 shirts using the design that we made would be sellable. Uh, and our target is 100. If we, we didn't uh, achieve the 100 shirt target, uh, at least I know uh, it won't succeed. And the cost that I incurred, uh, the advertising cost, Plus the design, if I hired someone to do that for me, that's the only cost. Hindi ko pa actually nag-print yung buong 100 shirt na inventory. And the few pre-orders that I made, I can talk to these people, maybe offer them benefits in the future, maybe a huge discount at the second batch of printing. I can ask them what's uh, their, what made them decide to pre-order that design. It, 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 what features uh, do they consider? Did they consider for uh, pre-ordering the, the set of shirts? 
So by doing so, I can learn more about the market without putting every budget that I have just for that first 100 set of shirts. So that's doing smart failures in your favor because in a business, as I mentioned, we're entering in a world full of uncertainty and failure is inevitable. Make failure work for you and uh, failure working for you means you learn on your failures and that learning would help you improve the next iteration, the next version of your business model, business plan. And by start by acting fast, you do that in a, a week time, a month's time so that you can improve. And lastly, for a new business, for a new business, it's not capital that's the most valuable asset that you would have. It's actually the validated learnings that you would create uh, when you do market research. It's not the capital. You can have so much capital, but when you don't know much about your target market, you won't have the products best suited for them. And uh, this is one way to validate uh, your assumption because in a business model, we jump on certain conclusions, assumptions that we usually are blindsided about. Hindi natin alam na hindi pala, hindi natin naisip na nag-assume lang tayo. And by testing the market initially through market research, we can know that uh, this would happen, should happen and uh, we need to do this so that we can get the demand or the need that we're, we're, we're uh, uh, implying for our products and services. Again, thinking big, starting small, acting fast. And the result is smart failures leading to validated learning. And that learning would help us improve our business. It doesn't mean um, you put everything, every budget, every financial resource that you have on certain projects. You just use the cheapest uh, method possible, but you would get the highest learning. And that smart failure, in, in case you fail, uh, usually, I assume failure when we do certain experiments, but uh, the 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 you hedge from the risk of of losing all of your budget and you protect yourself because when you do business, especially so small entrepreneurs like me, uh, I want to be smart on the budget I'm using. I want to be focused on certain need that I want to pursue and I don't want to uh, prioritize others. So I want to be focused. And by, do, by being focused, I'm using the cheapest experiments to learn more about my target market. And by learning more, I can know their needs, their wants, their pain, pain points, so that I can iterate or improve, revise my you know, products and services to better suit them. Um, I'm also mentioning you need to be narrow on your initial target market, especially for starting business, because you need to perfect the customer profile, their needs, their wants, before you expand to a larger market. So that's my way of doing thinking big, starting small, and acting fast. All right. So, uh, second part of our our um, first webinar, a uh, little bit of business one hundred and one. So, business generally is a, a manufacturing or or a factory of of. Uh, changing inputs and offering that to customers at a higher value. 
and the markup or the difference would be your profit. Simple as that. Now, in, in processing inputs, uh, these are the three major functional areas of a business. You create value. So this involves product development, your, your supply chain, your inventory. Creating value is the definition of operations, operations management. That's the simple, simplest definition you can have. Get value. Get value is how you would deliver, how you would communicate your products and services to your customers. And that's basically is marketing. That's the simplest definition of marketing. You get value from your customers through revenue and profit. Now, the last part is about growing. And growing involves managing the cost in the creation of value uh, in relation to the getting value, the revenue that you get. From marketing so you, you manage that you can grow your business you can reinvest the profit into your business for it to grow in a sustainable uh, manner so that's an interplay of the three basic functions of a business uh, the operations management marketing management and financial management simple yet this is a, a quick snapshot of, of how a business works so again, operations is getting value, marketing. Oh, operations is creation of value from raw inputs into something valuable. Then marketing is delivering that value that involves promotions, communication, uh, and then the prices. Finance is about growing your business and putting operations and marketing side by side so that you would generate profit at the end. It's about viability for finance. So operations or getting value or creation of value is checking the feasibility of your product. Can you create that product at these cost assumptions? So that's feasibility. Marketing answers the desirability. How desirable is your product in the perspective of your customer. So, ibig sabihin, the more uh, narrow, the more knowledge you have uh, on your target market, the better chances you have in offering the best product that is desirable in their opinion. Lastly, finance or growing the business is about viability. It's the cost. It's the feasibility the cost to produce is lower than the value you get from the products from your customers, and that's the revenue. So basically, viability. It's uh, do you do we do we have profits at the end of operations and marketing? So that's a quick quick definition, a business one on one. Operations management, marketing management, and financial ma management. It answers feasibility for operations, desirability for marketing, and viability for finance. Now, uh, in the operations, we have four, actually just uh, three um, uh, major difference from a typical business, a traditional businesses. Um, in e-commerce or online business, you have an online equivalent of the physical store, and that's your electronic store. It could be website-based, social media-based, marketplace-based uh, like Shopee Lazada. Doesn't matter as long as you have an online equivalent of your physical store. That's the ma one major difference of e-commerce to your typical traditional physical business. Second, you have a different manner to collect payments. And that's 
the electronic way to get payments. Usually, you use payment gateways. The common ones are PayPal. In the Philippines, I use uh, PayMongo service. Uh, if you're familiar with that, just Google that. Uh, Filipino startup. It's like PayPal, but for Filipinos, they can pay in 7-Eleven, um, GrabPay, GCash, and then credit card, something like that, for a certain fee. Much lower than the international options like PayPal. And it can easily be connected on your website. All right? That's payments. In traditional businesses, it's kaliwaan, di ba? Kaliwaan. Uh, in e-commerce, the difference is an electronic manner of collecting payments. Third, logistics. Especially for online businesses or e-commerce selling physical items. Logistics is a critical component of, of e-commerce. It's much highlighted, especially if uh, every business, there are logistics part. Uh, but the traditional one, usually at the back end from uh, sourcing supplies or raw materials. But in e-commerce, the delivery to your customers is critical. And usually it affects price and it affects the, the customer satisfaction logistics. Lastly, fourth one, it should be marketing. Uh, marketing, but marketing in the physical and the digital one has been blurred. Uh, physical businesses usually use digital marketing. So uh, the, deline the delineation of digital and traditional marketing is not that big nowadays because every business practice uh, uh, a part digital, a part traditional. What separates e-commerce to a traditional business is content, meaning you have good representation of your products and services in terms of photos, in terms of description, and in the world full of online business, what separates you is your content. The way you do description should be better. It should not, especially for resellers, like if you import stuff from other countries, they usually provide general description. If you just copy and paste that in your electronic store, it won't appear on the search engine. It won't be searched because it's duplicate content. You need to create your own, you know, with your own tone, own style, in accordance to your branding. So that's what separates. So that's the four uh, major difference of a typical e-commerce operations uh, as against the traditional business. Other stuff uh, would apply to both, but these four are the focus of our course, all right? Um, in marketing, marketing side, we have three factors consider the value the value of our products and that can be based on price and the benefits the target market and the relationship that we plan to uh, have with our customers uh, usually relationships uh, that the the typical e-commerce stores it's like transactional uh, when they buy you get you, they get the product and that's that's it but nowadays relationship is highlighted especially when a business tries to create a brand and when you create a brand the value the price that you can offer gets high uh, as uh, through time through time so that that's relationship so the feasibility, desirability, and viability is part of your second activity for this course, the assignment number two. It's creation of a business model. And the best tool to create a business model is using a one-page template using the business model canvas. So this is a, uh, if you want to know more about the tool, 
uh, there are books. Uh, you can ask me for, uh, I can offer you some copies of a uh, summarized version, but generally this is a result of uh, a dissertation, a study of all the business model literature out there. And these nine building blocks are the common building blocks of a good business model. So the value proposition is the benefit that you offer. Customer relationship, as I mentioned, how you want to be known by your customers. And by doing so, you need to know the, the specific target market you're, you're trying to pursue. And the channels are, well, in our course, it's e-commerce, so we need to have an e-commerce store. On the feasibility side, this is the operations management side. You need to be good at some activities and key resource. At the very least, you should have good digital marketing, uh, electronic store, logistics, and uh, what's that? Payments, key resource. What would, what would separate you from your competition? So you need to enumerate that. And you can't do that alone. You need to enumerate your key partners, suppliers, uh, regulators maybe, or some of uh, key partners or stakeholders that would help you outsource services maybe to do the key activities and key resource. At the bottom part of the business model canvas, are two things, cost structure and revenue stream. How do, how, what's the cost structure? Usually we do this fixed cost, variable cost, and focus more on the variable cost rather than the fixed. Those fixed costs are, yeah, fixed. What would increase your cost significantly? That's a cost structure. And revenue streams, how do you collect revenue? It could be freemium model. Uh, it could be transactional, it could be subscription, uh, it's up to you. So this is how you create a version of your business model. So a business model, again, are interaction of these nine building blocks so that you could have the best value proposition to your customers. And that's the first connection that you need to have. You need to have good value proposition match to your customer segment needs and wants. So uh, having said that, you need to do or you need to have the best value proposition. That's the benefit of your products and services. It should match the, the needs and wants of your customers. And that's mentioned here through uh, pains and gains of uh, customer activities. So we'll have some version of this discussion, but this is a value proposition canvas. This zooms, this template zooms in on the value proposition in the customer segment. Because again, I mentioned the number one killer of a business, especially new ones, is market risk, selling something that no one wants. So you need to have a product market fit means it means the needs should match the features or the benefits of the products and services you're offering. By having that match, you can have a more sustainable business model that you can create a business plan for. So it simply says our customer segment accomplishes things uh, daily, could be functional. Based sa trabaho, sa bahay, ano bang ginagawa nila. Sa paggawa nila ng jobs, customer jobs, that's what we call it, there are pains and there are gains. It's similar to needs and wants. And then, you match that with the products and services. What are the features? Pain relievers are to address the pains. Gain creators are there or features of products and services to, add, to, to match the gains. So simple, uh, simple uh, example, your target market are maybe artists, artists. And when uh, artists do their work, 
their number one job is to uh, be more productive in terms of uh, their time or one or maybe source uh, images yeah. stock images for example ang pains nila maybe uh, it's very difficult to get licensed uh, pictures that they can use for their artwork uh, gains, it would be better if uh, free or cheap. Yeah. So if you're offering a platform that offers products and services or products, digital products or images, licensed images, pain relievers could be, uh, uh, since it's very difficult for them, the features of your website, meron kang search box, it can easily match. Uh, keywords, gain creators, it could be a freemium model since gusto nila cheap. Uh, first, first download free and the succeeding ones may bayad na. So that's uh, how you do this template, the value proposition and customer segment. You match the features of your products and services or the platform you're trying to develop match it to the customer jobs. Um, imagine paano ginawa ang uh, value proposition canvas ng Facebook app. The customer job is a social uh, job that people, they need to feel good about themselves. And people need to go, uh, search news about their friends. Yan yung mga customer jobs na tinatarget ni Facebook. And gains, pains could be, syempre, mahilip mag-search. Lagay nila sa application, may news feed, ganyan. And then they tweak their application to match the needs. So uh, the moral of this template, you need to know what your customer do on a day-to-day -day basis, what activities you're trying to, uh, to uh, maybe penetrate or to grab. And then, uh, how would you package your product so that they would uh, match the needs and wants of your customers? So we'll have this, uh, uh, I think, another session for this one later for activity in assignment number two. All right. So uh, this is in relation, a quick, quick uh overview of the activities on assignment number three when you create a business model what you've written there are assumptions guesses that is full of biases personal biases kasi kayo nagsulat ito yung tingin nyo uh, it's bias based on your personal experience um uh, uh the, the quality of a good sustainable business model, it is based on facts. It is based on learning. And it is based on customers, actual data, not your personal experience. As an entrepreneur, we are not fortune tellers. We are uh, detectives trying to uncover clues that the customer are not communicating directly to us. So, you need to test the business model. You need to build prototypes, tests. You execute that in a weekly or monthly sprint or time frame. You measure results against your hypothesis or your target. And then you learn based on the results of that experiment. That's testing the model. And you do that on a continuous manner until you know that your business model would be successful so that your business would be viable, desirable, and feasible in terms of uh, your, your operations, marketing, and finance. So smart entrepreneur, now this is in relation to smart failures. You build hypotheses. Hypothesis, major technical in term, but it's just ano yung hula nyo na mangyayari. You need to have that guess 
uh, quantifiable so that you can check the results against that. You build the experiment, you measure results, and you learn and improve so that you have validated learnings. Builds, ito yung prototypes that I'm mentioning. First, builds or uh, minimum viable product. This is your way to uh, make validated learning so that when you fail, it's cheap, but the lessons will be so, much, so valuable. It can help you build better version of your business products and services. First, customer interview. Um, meron ka lang uh, brochure, an actual mock-up brochure. Kunyari, nagkitinda ka ng uh, sapatos. You have this image of the shoes you're selling. And then, you ask questions. Actual questions na kailan sila huling bumiling sapatos, ano yung uh, hinahanap nila sa isang sapatos, tapos ano yung existing brand nila. Since established naman na kailangan ng sapatos lahat ng tao. And then, ano yung nakita nilang problem. From there, you build up until you you introduce that you're trying to offer new set of shoes ganyan meron kang sariling design you show the image and you get feedback immediately so imagine you get a feedback that is same kung same siya as if meron ka ng actual na sapatos na tinitinda at the end you try to ask would you pay uh, 1,000 pesos for this kind of shoes. Yeah. Then you can make better, better question. You can ask for, uh, you can pre-sell the item to be released in a month's time. Pwede. So the more customer interviews you make, the better. You can find patterns. Medyo matrabaho, but the benefits are immense. Imagine, umpisa pa lang, you know, you know much about your customer uh, without doing the actual operations uh, agad-agad. Concept test, it's similar. Uh, you have this concept. Meron kang actual images. You can have prototypes. And then you pre-sale. Uh, concept test, is uh, customer interview, you, pwede mong gawin kahit wala kang image na kasama. Just questions lang. And then you explore, explore feedback. You discover patterns. May set of questions ka lang and then you just ask them. Concept test, meron ka ng madalang images. Sample, brochure, as if meron ka ng business pero nagsisimula ka pa lang. But you need to be, uh, you need to disclose that this is just for um, research. Yeah. Prototypes. Uh, meron ka na kung nagtitinda ka ng shoes, kunyari. Meron kang isang ginawang actual. Then you use that to, to, to ask for feedback. So imagine you can get learning immediately without um, without spending your budget in the actual production run for that example yung shoes niya so it can be applicable in any any business you try to test first ask for feedback before you actually build something but make sure you don't collect money with that customer interview concept test you don't ask for money because uh, it's bawal uh, you need to have proper registration to collect money from your customers. You can get pre-orders, but you don't get money. Just order. Maybe some contract or parang um, um, signifying their interest, something like that. A small investment such as signature on an order form is like a proxy for a non-operating business. Parang proxy siya sa actual sale. Because a signature is like an investment. No one would sign if they are not really interested. So that's uh, 
our proxy, especially for market research. Kahit nga magbigay ng email, phone number, it's an, a small investment which is similar or which is synonymous to uh, interest. Yeah. So, uh, that's a quick overview of what we'll be doing for the next few months. Uh, just a quick recap. We made a quick overview of the course, the survey response that I got, and then a quick observations on your assignments. Uh, and then a quick business 101 uh, in a context of an e-commerce business. And we use the business model canvas. That's how we can create a quick way on uh, uh, putting business factors or building blocks of a business, playing with each other so that we can get the best version for our cost, best product and service, the benefit we can deliver to our customers. And uh, I think we discussed the building blocks using the business model canvas, but the, the business 101 of getting value, that's marketing, and it answers desirability, creation of value, that's operations management, and that's uh, that answers feasibility, for our business. And lastly, finance is about viability. Can we get more than the cost uh, we incurred for that uh, product we're selling or product service we're selling? All right. So uh, that's my cue. Uh, target to kasi 9 o'clock. Eh? So one, 1 hour. I think, uh, sorry if I'm too fast. Uh, this is just an overview. We'll be having more in-depth uh, discussion, especially business model and the customer development. I mentioned a while ago, I'll, I'll be lenient in assignment number two and three because when you do an actual business, actual business na talaga, it's not just a classroom style or classroom, classroom setting. When you do business model, there's really no right or wrong answer because when you do your business model, this is just based on your assumption. It would be wrong or it would be incorrect if you don't validate those assumptions. And uh, assignment number three is about validation. You ask your customer. I remember uh, nung uso pa ang mga activities or workshops. We do actual workshops. Uh, I had this activity wherein uh, I asked for a volunteer. So participants in a workshop. A volunteer. And then the challenge is I'll split the other participants into maybe uh, several groups. And then the challenge is for 15 minutes, create a paper prototype of a wallet that would be bought by the volunteer. We began, we began ko siya ng actual 1,000 pesos. Pambayad niya sa best version ng wallet na magagawa dun sa workshop. But the challenge is at the initial 50, the, the first part of the 15 minutes, isusulat ko yung features na gusto ng volunteer sa isang papel. Uh, now, mapap, ang nangyayari palagi sa workshop na yun is that after the 15 minutes, they would present. They would present their uh, designed wallet. Pwedeng drawing, yung iba, yung iba, natutupi pa talaga yung wallet, yung iba, may mga demo pa ng mga Bluetooth, connectivity and all. At the end of the day, the end of that activity, no one uh, gets the 1,000. Because the criteria, kailangan perfect fit sa need ni target market. that In that case, yung volunteer. Um the moral of that 
the lesson of that activity is that when you do something, when you build something, the 15 minutes, 14 minutes should be, or majority, 90, 95%, 99% of your time should be allocated to asking your customers the needs that they have. Imagine kung tinanong lang nila yung volunteer, ano ba ang gusto mo sa isang wallet? Ano ba talaga? Mag-serve? Tanungin lang nila. And then, i-drawing nila yung wallet, kayang-kayang gawin yun in a minute, di ba? Makukuha mo yung 1,000. In actual practice, in reality, ganun lang kasimple ang paggawa ng magandang business, magandang product, or mabentang service. But entrepreneurs uh, or Filipinos are not that uh, diligent in terms of asking customers. Mag, magsa-search lang sila sa Facebook, magsa-search lang sa, sa Google, uh, the, the typical problems, ano yung mga usual studies. But secondary data search online is not valuable for a starting business. What's valuable are the actual anecdotes, the actual stories of your target market. That's why in activity on your assignment number three, it's about asking or, or, or interviewing actual people. Uh, kami nga nun, we try to talk as much as 100 individuals that would, that would fit the customer profile that we are aiming for. And by that time, since same naman yung set questions, um, you can find patterns that you, you can use to improve your uh, maybe e-commerce store, your actual product or actual service. So that's basically uh, what we'll be doing for the rest of the course. And at the end, it's about uh, apply, applying those learning in an actual e-commerce store. Uh, it could be based on social media. It could be based on marketplaces. It could be based on an actual hosted owned website. It could be based on mark. Um, manage e-commerce website like Shopify and other options that you may think of. Uh, so um, with that, I'll be ending our uh, discussion. Hopefully, sana may naintindihan ang ating mga students. And if you want copy of this slide, uh, just ask me for copies and I'll be posting that on online. Uh, do you have questions? Questions? Gising pa ba? So, again, thank you. Thank you po for attending our first live one. Um, so again, attendance in live webinars like this one are optional. It won't affect your grade. Um, though I'll be uh, putting some siguro bonus points for those who attend uh, na lang, but it won't affect your, 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 your grades whatsoever in terms of deduction or something like that. Wala. Optional siya. The course is asynchronous. Ibig sabihin, you can uh, watch, you can do the activities at your own pace. Uh, just follow the schedule in terms of the deadline sa mga assignment and um, e-commerce project at the end. So, yun lang. Um, but it would help, especially this way. I believe may mga tatlong student tayo, may actual business, running, operating, registered business. And uh, it would help them, especially uh, on the marketing side kapag nandun na tayo sa mga matitinding discussion. You just ask for topics on, on the the uh, the portal and my portal or for other um, request na mga topics kaya nag-open lang ako ng mga araw na walang topic. 
last time digital marketing kami actual nag nagbukas kami ng Facebook ads na platform. So pinakita ko kung paano namin minarket yung from scratch zero patients sa uh, aming uh, dental clinic dito sa Metro Manila. So from zero patient in a span of two months. Yan. Overflowing with customers and, or patients. All right. So with that, uh, thank you very much and see you on our my portal. Just just uh, key in some comments, feedback, and uh, kung ano man, uh, type nyo lang po dyan. All right. Thank you very much po. Thank you and have a nice weekend ahead of you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you po.